Hey everyone, this is Hubwood, and today we are gonna take a closer look at the Minis Forum M1 Pro Mini PC, and it's so quiet. Jokes aside, this really is the most silent mini PC with that kind of performance that I've ever tested. And it can even be paired with an Oculink eGPU like the Minis Forum DEG1 to turn this into pretty much a fully fledged gaming PC which we'll also talk about later. For full transparency, Minis Forum provided me with this test sample and the eGPU dock, though they did not pay for the review, I wasn't obliged to make a review at all, and they didn't get to see the video before you guys. So in today's tested configuration, it comes with an Intel Core Ultra 285H with six performance, eight efficiency, and two low power cores for a total of 16 cores, though no hyperthreading. Minis Forum paired it with 32GB of DDR5 RAM with 5600 mega transfers in a two-stick dual-channel configuration and a fast 1TB M.2 PCI Gen 4 SSD with good reading and writing speeds of around 5GB per second. There is a second M.2 slot available, but that one is blocked if you want to use the Oculink port as that needs the Oculink card to be installed in the mentioned second slot. It also sports a modern Wi-Fi 7 module and Bluetooth 5.4 and it also comes with a small proprietary 120 watt AC adapter while it can also be powered via USB-C. And of course Windows 11 is pre-installed. But it will also be available with 2TB M.2s and 64GB of DDR5 6400 mega transfer RAM for around 1199 euro or dollar and a slower Intel Core Ultra 5 125H version with 1TB and 32GB for around $500. Connection-wise, at the front we are getting two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, a USB 4 port with power delivery and a 3.5mm audio jack. And at the back it offers a 2.5GB LAN port, a display port connection, the mentioned optional Oculink port, HDMI 2.1, another USB 4 port and an additional USB 2 Type-A port. And yes, both USB-C ports support display out, so you could actually use something like the Vichur XR glasses for a super minimalistic setup. Or just connect it to up to no less than four monitors instead. Now the connection variety is okay, but I would have preferred more USB ports at the back in case you're using a cable mouse and a cable keyboard. Also, USB 2.0 should be obsolete by now, even if it can of course be used for a mouse. Now, the size of the M1 Pro is pretty typical for a mini PC with around 12.8 by 12.5 by 5.2 centimeters and a weight of 600 gram. The body is made out of aluminum and it feels super stable and well produced, while the greater like grid on the side and the overall design are quite reminiscent of current Mac Minis by Apple. Opening the Minis Forum N1 Pro for an upgrade is super easy. Just release the four long Phillips head screws at the bottom and you're already in. Though the bottom is connected by two rather short cables and they can unplug themselves while opening the M1, so don't forget to replug them before closing it again. Once inside, you can easily upgrade or change the RAM, add another M.2 or install the Oculus adapter if needed. Now, I've mentioned it in the beginning, but this Minis Forum M1 Pro is incredibly silent, both on lighter tasks and under maximum load. Even using the performance mode, which can be chosen in the BIOS, it is barely hearable when fully utilized. The cooling system is just insanely good. By the way, the BIOS is the only place where you can change that as there is no other control software available yet. I've measured 32 dB on idle for the performance mode and only 36 dB after a 30-minute Cinebench 2024 run, in which it scored up to 1105 points for the multicore and very high 133 for the single-core score. And 36 dB is barely hearable. It's just a silent whispering and that's it. It's quieter than almost any laptop with similar performance. While the temperatures are actually really decent with around 77 degrees Celsius after 30 minutes with an ambient temperature of around 23 degrees Celsius. And it's even quieter on balanced mode with now only 33 decibels after 30 minutes and still respectable 1002 points for the multicore and the same 133 points for the single core score. And just for the sake of completeness, in Cinebench R23 it scored up to 19,898 for the multicore and a very high 2,237 for the single core score. 
The CPU draws up to 54 Watt in performance mode in the long run and 45 Watt in balanced mode. While the temperature is slightly higher in balanced mode due to the slightly slower spinning fan. But overall, this is an exceptionally good cooling system and it really kind of sets a high standard for Minis Forum's competitors. Also talking about loudness, the M1 Pro has integrated speakers, but they don't get loud and they sound super flat. But it's better having them than not, I guess. In the PC Mark 10 benchmark, the M1 Pro scores a high 7,922 points, meaning it is blazing fast for everyday tasks and beyond. In the Pudget Systems Premier Pro benchmark, it scored 3,453 points, while normal 4K video editing is absolutely possible here, and in Photoshop it scored up to a decent 7,396 points in performance mode, while for the new After Effects benchmarks, that resulted in 4,809 points. By the way, since the Intel Core Ultra 285H is a Core Ultra 2 CPU, it qualifies you to use the free Intel AI Playground software without any registration needed, and that can actually serve you as an image creation AI or an LLM super easily, which is pretty usable. However, beside the M1 Pro being a perfect desktop replacement for daily work, office stuff, surfing, etc., it can also game. Now, let's also have a look at the optional $100 Minis Forum DEG1, which is an eGPU dock for the M1 Pro's Oculink port. As mentioned before, you'll unfortunately have to sacrifice one of the M.2 slots to use it, but it pays off. I've tested it with my RTX 4070 desktop GPU and an older and used 400 watt Be Quiet System Power 9 PSU in a couple of games at 1080p, 1440p and at 4K. And compare the results with my desktop PC which sports an Ryzen 7 7700X and 32GB of DDR6000 megatransfer RAM. And we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077 on ultra settings without any upscaling or frame generation. At 1080p, the M1 Pro without the eGPU, of course, isn't fast enough for fluid gameplay on ultra settings with 20 FPS on average, due to it only having an Arc Graphics 140T iGPU. But with the RTX 4070 in the eGPU dock, it scored an over 5 times higher 105 FPS on average, which is already pretty close to the 116 I achieved for my desktop PC. At 1440p, that gap is getting even smaller, with a difference of now only 2 FPS on average and identical 1% lows. 65 versus 67 FPS, while the M1 Pro, without an external GPU, now only achieved 13 FPS in that test. And at 4K, the DEG1 eGPU dock achieved almost the same performance with the RTX 4070, while without the LSS, the RTX 4070 desktop isn't fast enough for fluid gameplay on ultra settings. However, these numbers suggest that you could even use a faster desktop GPU for even better results here. In Assassin's Creed Shadows on ultra settings and again without any DLSS, it's a similar picture with only a small lead of 14% for my desktop PC. I actually didn't think the Oculink dock would be able to keep up that well to be honest. At 1440p it's a similar outcome with 42 versus 47 FPS and at 4K the difference between the two is only 10% while the Arc Graphics 140T gets totally destroyed here. I mean, of course. In Forza Horizon 5 on Ultra settings and MSAA by 2, the Arc Graphics 140T is actually fast enough to provide 30 FPS on average, while with the RTX 4070 desktop and the eGPU dock it's already 142 FPS on average versus the 161 FPS in my desktop PC. At 1440p the difference once again gets smaller with now 129 versus 141 FPS, and only 9% difference at 4K where my desktop scored 103 FPS on average over the 93 FPS of the M1 Pro with the DEG1 Oculink dock using my RTX 4070 desktop. The biggest difference I saw actually was for Shadow of the Tomb Raider on ultra settings, again without upscaling, where my desktop was 33% faster at 1080p with 220 over 165 FPS, while the M1 Pro with only the Arc 140T was actually able to achieve 35 FPS on average. At 1440p, the difference shrank to 9% with 156 over 143 FPS on average and only 22 for the M1 without the dock. And here are the results for the 4K benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And last but not least for Black Myth, Wukong, using the very high preset without upscaling or frame generation, 
The difference at 1080p was marginal with 53 over 51 FPS for my desktop PC, while the game is absolutely unplayable that way without a dedicated GPU. At 1440p there basically was no difference anymore and both configurations performed the same, just as when I was testing the benchmark at 4K. So overall the difference between my desktop PC using the very same GPU was pretty small compared to my previous experience with a cheap Thunderbolt eGPU from AliExpress a while ago, which is a video that you can watch afterwards if you're interested. But now let's also have a quick look at some games directly on the M1 Pro 285H version with more realistic settings if you're not using the Ocarlink port dock, but only the integrated Arc Graphics 140T in here. Now for Cyberpunk 2077 this time I was using medium settings with XCSS on balanced at 1080p which resulted in an average of 42 FPS and 1% lows of 31 FPS. As you can see here in the OSD the M1 Pro isn't fully utilizing the maximum wattage when gaming. Overall the game is playable that way while it isn't perfect. But the results have been a bit better than with the Geekom IT15 with the same CPU which I've tested a few weeks back. In CS2 I was using the low preset at 1080p in a match against bots on Dust2 which resulted in an average of 142 FPS and 1% lows of 83. So that's actually pretty okay and you would even benefit from a faster 120Hz monitor for faster reactions and such. As you can see the M1 stays pretty cool while gaming overall. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 runs a bit better than Cyberpunk 2077 due to its good optimization with the low preset and medium textures using FSR on balanced. That resulted in an average of 51 FPS and great 1% lows of 40 FPS. Very playable actually and an average of 60 is possible if you're willing to set FSR to performance, but I'd only do that on smaller screens. For GTA 5 Enhanced Online, I was using the high preset with FSR on balanced at 1080p and that resulted in playable 52 FPS on average and good 1% lows of 41 FPS. Definitely playable with some headroom since the CPU doesn't seem to bottleneck the game that way. So since the 140T is one of the faster iGPUs you can surely do some casual gaming while indie games and older eSport titles are usually working absolutely fine. And if you need more gaming power, the DEG1 Oculink Dog is a good option and transforms this into a real gaming PC, while of course it will use significantly more space on your desk that way and depending on the chosen GPU it will become much more hearable compared to when you're using it as a standalone machine only. So overall this is a pretty convincing mini PC. I absolutely loved how quiet it is. It's super powerful, it has a great design. The only tiny flaw might be the arrangement of the ports or at least an additional USB port at the back and the fact you'll have to sacrifice an M.2 slot for the Oculink port if needed. Other than that, it's pretty close to perfection for what it is. If you want to try it out for yourself, take a look at the link in the description. There also might be a discount but I'm not 100% sure about that yet. And that's all for today. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to like the video or subscribe to the channel also don't forget to check out my review of a cheap eGPU dock on AliExpress or what the Viture glasses can actually do. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.